Hi scholars, welcome back to Making Meaning. I'm Miss Keller. Today we're going to continue working on nonfiction wondering, asking and answering questions about a text and a topic. Today's lesson you will need a talk partner. So I'm going to give you a chance to go ahead and get a family member, a stuffed animal, a imaginary friend, someone you can share your thinking with. Great. Scholars, we've been hearing in our last few lessons about insects and butterflies whose habitats or homes are in parks and like we have in Seattle. And we've learned about where they live, what they're like. Today we're going to hear a nonfiction book about another kind of animal that lives in our parks. Spiders. We're going to discuss what we learn and wonder. The text for today is Spinning Spiders. It's by Melvin Berger, illustrated by S.D. Schneider, and it's a HarperCollins published book. What do you think you know about spiders? And to add on to that, what do you wonder about spiders? Before I read, I want you to think about that. And I want you to give yourself a moment. If you share the I wonder, you could say, I wonder something you think you know, I've learned. Go ahead and turn to your partner and share. Wonderful. I've heard some scholars say that they know that spiders have a lot of legs and they have a really big body and a small head. That's what they think they know. And then I got called in about some wondering. So we wonder about spiders. I wonder how many legs spiders have. Someone else was wondering how many kinds of spiders are there in the world? And why do spiders make spider webs? Well, scholars, since we already are wondering, got our brains turned on, Let's go ahead and start reading. We're going to read the first part of the text in our lesson today and see if we can find some answers to those questions and what other wonders we have while we read. Spider webs are everywhere. You find them high up on walls and windows, on lamps and lights, in dark corners, sheds, barns, garages. Those are all favorite places for spider webs. Outdoors, you find them on trees and plants, swings and slides, poles and fences, and even in the grass. New spider webs are beautiful patterns of thin threads. Right there, that bike. Old webs may be covered with dirt and dust. We call them cobwebs. Wow. What did you learn about spiders' habitats or the places they live? And when you're ready, I learned blank. That's right. They're everywhere. I know that when I am on the playground, I see sometimes cobwebs in the morning, especially if it's been raining and there's a little bit of dew on them hanging between the bars. It says on swings and slides, it also said that you can find spider webs in garages or on the sheds, which are where we keep some of our tools. Thank you. There were more than 30,000 
kinds of spiders. They can be small, oops, or big, fat, or thin, short, or long. Most are brown, black, gray, or other dull colors, but a few are as bright and colorful as flowers. Most people confuse spiders and insects. Spiders are not insects. Spiders are arachnids. Oh, I love how they have this pronunciation, arachnids. Spiders are arachnids. Some other well-known arachnids are mites, ticks, and scorpions. Arachnids differ from insects in a few ways. Arachnids have eight legs. Insects have six legs. Adult arachnids do not have wings. Most adult insects do have wings. Arachnid bodies have two main parts. Insect bodies have, do you remember? Three main parts. Arachnids do not have feelers or antenna. Insects, we know from the ants, have antenna, so the butterflies. Ooh. There's a lot of comparisons just now. What did we learn about the differences between arachnids and insects? What were the differences or the contrast? Stop and think. When you're ready. There was a lot, wasn't there? One of the com um, contrasts is that adult arachnids do not have wings, but we know that insects like wasps have wings. Another contrast between the two, between arachnids and insects are arachnids have eight legs and insects only have, show me, show me, show me. That's right, six legs. Spiders are the only arachnids that spin webs like of silk threads. They make the silk with special organs. Those are your body parts. They make the silk with special organs at the end of their body. These organs are called spinnerets. Most kinds of spiders have six spinnerets. Some only have four and some only have two. A liquid comes out of the spinneret, outside of the body. The liquid hardens into a solid thread of silk. The thread is very thin, but it is very sticky. It is stronger than a steel thread. That means is a very, steel is a very strong type of metal. So it is sticky, but it is stronger than a steel thread that size. And it can stretch. The silk thread can stretch to almost twice its length. That means two times its length. Many spiders use the silk to create, to make webs. The webs are to catch insects that they eat. What did you just learn about how spider webs are made? That's right. They have a very strong silk that they put from their spinneret. It says right here, a liquid comes out of the spinnerets and then it hardens into silk, a silk thread that is very strong like steel and stretchy. If a fly buzzes too close to a spider web, it gets stuck on the sticky threads. The fly tries to pull away. It flaps its wings. It kicks its feet. It wiggles and wriggles, but it cannot escape. It is stuck in the web's threads. 
I love how the illustration really depicted how the fly was stuck. Most spiders grab the fly with their two fangs. That's the long, sharp, right there, part of the mouth. Most spiders grab the fly with their two fangs. They wrap the fly's body with silk so it cannot move. Then they inject, that means that they push, they inject a poison into the fly. The poison dissolves, that means that the inside of the fly's body becomes liquid. The poison in dissolves the inside of the fly's body. Spiders don't have teeth. They can't chew. They can only drink. So once the fly's insides have turned to mush, the spider can slurp it up. A spider usually eats about one bug a week and sometimes more. All right, scholars. What did you learn about how spiders eat their food? to your partner. That's right, they slurp it up after they dissolve it with their poison that they inject into the body. Wonderful. All right, I want you to think, what did the book say that you already knew about spiders? Because I know that some of you are spider experts out there, and you knew a lot about spiders. So stop and think, what did I already know? Go ahead and share with your partner what you already knew about spiders. Are you like me? You already knew they had eight legs. I also already knew they were called arachnids. Now I want you to think. Were any of our wonders explained in the text? In that first part, let's look at those wonders again. Wonder how many legs spiders have. Oh, that was answered. I should mark that, right? right in the beginning it was when it was comparing the arachnids to I marked that at the start as we know when it was comparing it to insects it said that arachnids have eight legs okay. how many kinds of spiders are there in the world did we find an answer to that question you're right we did didn't we let's go back and check where we found that all right that's one of my favorite pages because it has so many spiders on it this page. It says there are more than 30,000 kinds of spiders. That's a lot of spiders. So again, we did start to find an answer to that one. So I'm going to put a star by that. Why do spiders make spider webs? Yeah, that was the whole last part. Oh, you guys are so smart. That's right. It says... Why? They make it so that they can grab those flies and eat their food. It's also their home, right? It talks about where they make the spider webs so they have it to live and to eat. So I'm going to put a star next to that one as well. Wow. This is a very informative book about spiders. My next question is, is there anything that you learned that interested or surprised you? For example, and I was going to jump the gun and share this a minute ago, what something I learned that I found really interesting was the part about the arachnids compared to the uh, insects in that part. I didn't know that spiders are related to scorpions and ticks and mites. 
So that was something that I learned. So spiders are arachnids related to scorpions, ticks, and mites. What else did you learn that surprised or interested you? And when you're ready, you can turn to your partner. That, yes, that was also very interesting. I agree. Someone phoned in. They said, when they inject a poison and turn the fly's body to mush, so they can slurp it up. That's what they learned, and that was interesting to them. Whew. All right. Well, that's the first part of this text. And I know that I actually have more questions now than when I started reading. So you probably do, too. What are you wondering now about spiders? Go ahead and when you're ready, ask your questions to your partner. Those are some great questions that you have. Here's a couple more. Do all spiders make spider webs? How big do spiders get? Those are great questions. And in our next lesson, we're gonna read more of the text and see if we can get answers to those questions. In the meantime, we're gonna do some vocabulary. We have, there are some really cool words in here and one of them. We already heard a couple times. The word is dull. Okay, I'll bring this down here so we can see it there. Dull. If you look at this car, it's dull. That means that it is not very shiny. So we learned the word gleam in our last Lesson about insect detectives means shiny. This is the opposite. It means kind of boring. Black, gray things, they're kind of dull usually. This car is old, so it's dull, it's not shiny. In the text, it was talking about spiders are usually dull, okay? They're usually black or gray. They're not very exciting. Okay, they're kind of boring. That is also a meaning for dull. Not shiny and also kind of boring. Like I went to the movies and it was a very dull movie. It was a very boring movie. I want you to think, what are some dull things in your home? Hmm. What are some not shiny, boring things? For example, in my home, my floor is kind of dull. It's a brown. It's not very shiny, not very bright. That's right. Maybe you have a chair in your home that is a dull brown or a black color. Maybe you have some uh, books that are dull, meaning that they are the outside cover. For example, this one doesn't have very much on it. It's dull, okay, compared to my moth's book, which is very shiny and bright. It's the way something looks. Now, you could also think of a movie you've seen lately that is dull, boring. I haven't seen any lately that are boring. Our second word is solid. Say solid. The word solid means hard. Okay, this apple is hard. The, what the spider does to a fly is the opposite. Okay, the fly was solid or hard and then 
after the spider injects the poison into it, it becomes mushy. Before that, it was solid. Hmm. I have a wonder for you. Look around your room and I want you to think, what is something that is solid? Is your milk solid? I hope not, it would not be very good tasting. But yes, our books on our bookshelves are solid. My whiteboard is solid. Those are all hard things. Okay. So those are our two words. I will test you on our next lesson, see if you can hear me say the word, because I will insert it in the lesson somewhere. In my class, what we do when we hear Miss Keller say a word from our vocabulary, we put our hands on our head. So you can do that while you're listening. If you hear me say dull or solid, you know, like I've said the word gleam several times today. So when you hear it in the next lesson, you can put your hands on your head to know that you're paying attention to the vocabulary. I am now going to send you for your IDR. You have a job to do. You need to get a nonfiction book. I've got my nonfiction book, Bats, Nocturnal Flyers by Rebecca Risman. And I need you to go read for 20 minutes to grow that brain. And while you're reading, you are thinking about why did you choose this book? And what are you wondering about that book? So I got my book, Bats, and I immediately started thinking, why did I choose this book? Well, I choose this, chose this book because I wanted to learn where bats live. And guess what? I looked at that table of contents and I saw that there was a whole chapter, Where Bats Live, on page eight. And so I went there to read. And it's, I marked it with my little card so I knew right where to go. Bats live on every continent except for Antarctica. They live in groups called colonies. So there's the map showing stars where bats live. They don't live in Antarctica. Bats spend days sleeping in dark, quiet places called roosts. A roost is um, like their nest. Roosts can be found in caves, holes, and trees, and even in some attics. Their home. A roost is their home. I kept reading for the rest of my 20 minutes, but I marked my page so that when I was done, I could write about my reading. I wrote, my book is Bats by Rebecca Rissman. I chose this book because I wanted to learn where bats live. I wonder how many bats are in a colony. On that same page, it was talking about how they live in a colony. I'm curious to know how many live in a colony. So I want you to go get your Just Right book. That is nonfiction. And I want you to read and think about those questions Grow your brain and I will see you for our next lesson while we finish our spider text.